Welcome to The Complete Emu, Part 2. This second part includes episodes 7 through 11 that were released to our patrons during the second season of Ostium. As I said in my introduction to Part 1, I'm releasing The Complete Emu because Dave will become a focal character in Season 3 of Ostium, and I want everyone to be caught up on the whole story. Enjoy the continuing tales of Dave as he travels through Ostium and brings his story to its conclusion. Emu, installment number seven. I don't think I've ever been this alone before. I mean, there have been lots of times when I felt very much emotionally alone and lost. After losing Dad and then Mum. Mostly during the lows of my life, I felt helpless and alone, as the cliche goes. But here, in Ostium, it's a whole different arena. (laughs) Bloody hell. It's a whole different fucking sport. I arrived thinking I'd find, well, not friends exactly, but acquaintances. At least one, named Jake. Instead, I found an empty town. A deserted village. An empty hamlet in the back end of nowhere. Oh god, I'm starting to sound like him. Like Jake. With a listing of basically the same thing over and over. Need to steer away from that. So what the fuck do I do now? Jake and Monica are in a different ostium. Somehow. I can't even wrap my mind around that concept. But it's the only one that makes sense. That fits. That even works in this situation. (laughs) Bloody hell. There I go again. I'll try to avoid this, but I'm only human. I did all the work and got where I needed to be. So now what? I suppose I should start with not repeating myself anymore, getting up off my arse and doing something about it. Which means what exactly? Oh, and in case you haven't noticed, I've gone into full monologue mode now. I've abandoned the in-depth discussions and introspections on the episodes of Ostium a few installments ago. And now that I'm here, Chin-wagging about that stuff seems as pointless as a Buckingham Palace guard without his black fur pillbox hat. Yeah, that was a bit of a stretch, but I've got to consider my international audiences now, don't I? Make sure my similes aren't too complicatedly British for them. You don't want me to start bringing out the cockney now, do you? Where was I? Nattering on about myself as per usual. But that's what the new and important enigmatic mysteries of the unknown is going to be like now. Sort of. I don't really know. I'm going to try and describe things as I see and experience them. And I'm going to give you my thoughts and ideas. I suppose if I keep getting access to new episodes of Ostium, I'll let you know what I think. But there's nothing I can really do now that I'm here. Except physically go out and try to bloody find them. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've thought about it for all of 30 seconds, and I've got fuck all options here. So we're going to go with the most obvious one, my dear Watson. I'm going to find door number two and see if I can get the bloody thing open. But first, I'm quite a bit peckish and parched, so let's see what they've got to nosh on in this joint. I'm going to be bold and reckless and have one of Jake's meals of the day. 
the iconic and all-American peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yes, don't worry, I know it's not made of real jelly, like my Auntie Ada's trifle, but in fact jam. I managed to assemble an approximation of this famous, or is that infamous, lunchtime delicacy to the best of my ability. It tastes... interesting. I'm not going to attempt to include chewing sounds of me ingesting this nutritious sandwich and try to take this podcast to a whole new level, because I know sounds of eating and drinking are a big no-no for just about anyone who likes listening to anything. Whether you're on the receiving end of a telephone or addicted to listening to a hundred podcasts a week. Uh, you've got the sweetness of the jam sort of mixing with the nuttiness of the peanut butter. And I know that Brit, Dominic Monaghan, you know, Charlie from Lost, was way into peanut butter on that show. And I'll admit I enjoy the ingredient in some good Indian cooking, but otherwise I pretty much avoid it whenever I can. And this sandwich is... Oh, God. Who am I kidding? It's bloody awful. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, America, if I trod on your shoes and insulted your sense of taste. But this is not a sandwich. It's a... Uh... Well, I don't know what. But it's not a meal. And I wouldn't really call it a snack. So instead, I settle for a jam sandwich. Again, I wouldn't really call that a sandwich, but there are two pieces of very white bread involved, and they're stuck together with jam, so I don't know what else to call it. Once I'm no longer famished, and after swallowing a gallon of tap water, I feel ready for whatever hurdle Ostium wants to put in front of me to trip over. I step outside of HQ, and then call myself a complete bloody plonker, and go back inside. I make myself five more jam sandwiches, and find a few bottles of water. Wish I'd had those earlier before I was sucking on the end of the tap, like a... Well, you can come up with your own tasteful simile. I also found some snack bars, Jake's favourite probably, and filled up my knapsack. Now, let's try this again then. I lift up my foot, about to step outside, and stop pulling it back in. Now I'm calling myself a right old pillock, going back to the map table and looking at where the hell I'm exactly supposed to be going. Good. Now I know. Back outside, and this time we're finally off. Now, the reason I filled up my knapsack with so much food is because I don't know what's going to happen once I go through that first door. And again, that's assuming I can get the ruddy thing open. So if I step through and am magically transported centuries back in time to Roanoke, there could be all manner of beasties waiting for me. There's the blackness to be concerned about. Jake always seemed to have some sort of control over it, or at least an innate ability to recognize it for what it was and when it was coming for him. As for me, I'm a little different. This is all very new territory for me, and I really don't know what to expect. And I definitely don't think I'm going to have any connections with Ostium, like Jake has. So it means a whole different set of rules for me when we're talking about going through doors and across time and space. To end a long story that has become a long story and not short by any means, I don't know what the fuck I'm getting into here. So at the very least, having something to nosh on and fill my belly is the least bit of self-preservation I can participate in. And here we are at this special door with the number two on it. Well, here goes. Ladies and gents, the handle turns and we have a winner. The door opens and I'm staring at all black. I'm looking around, enjoying what I can see, hear and smell of Ostium. Possibly for the last time, I don't know. Okay, I'm getting ready to go through. See you on the other side, dear listeners. Hopefully. And our new mantra for this episode of Enigmatic Mysteries of the Unknown, in the words of a recent Doctor Who incarnation, is... (laughs) 
Emu in Storm Number 8. I went through, expecting chilly weather and green trees reaching to the sky and soft brown earth underfoot. I expected a view of the woods and a distant wooden wall. I expected a bloody great big tree with the letters C-R-O carved into them. (sighs) I didn't find any of that. I was in the... I don't know. The bloody desert it looked like. It's beltingly hot. Hotter than I've ever experienced anywhere I've been in the UK. Even hotter than that package holiday I took to Ibiza. It's... It just feels like the fucking desert. Or what I imagined it would feel like if I ever took a jaunt to the Sahara or Atacama. Or that bloody scorching place in California. Death Valley. That's it, isn't it? I feel drenched in sweat. Like someone just poured a bucket of water over me. But all the water's on the inside. Under my clothes. The only time I ever feel anything like this is when I'm somewhere hot. Like the above-mentioned Ibiza. And definitely not South End or Brighton. And about to jump in the pool or flop into the sea. I'm usually in my swimming costume and not this fully clothed. To say I feel out of my element here is... Well, balmy, really. It's all very overwhelming at first. And bright. Very bright. The sun feels like it's taking over everything. Blinding light everywhere. It takes me a few ticks to get used to the glare. Acclimatize. Isn't that the fancy word for it? And I can feel a migraine waking up. And I forgot to bring some bloody paracetamol. After a bit, I can start to see things. The heat from the sun and the sheer air itself has already informed me I'm somewhere bloody hot. Now I can see the rocks and hills, the sparse trees and blighted plants. This is a rough, barren land where I can't really imagine anyone wanting to ever live. But as I look around, I pick out some features in the distance. It's the side of a mountain with ledges and what looks like caves. There's also these great big tree trunks scattered along those ledges, one or two of them on each one. You might think it to be the cause of some strange natural happenstance an out-of-the-blue storm or torrential rainfall. Though the thought of rain right now is about as logical as the British deciding to drive on the right side of the road. Yes, the right side, not the left. You know what I mean. Anyway, from my specific point of view, looking at the side of the mountain as a whole, one can see that these tree trunks are specifically and specially placed. Ergo, by human hands. No bloody clue who's human hands, but someone's. And then I see movement, and my mouth literally drops open. And that blistering heat starts evaporating all the moisture in my mouth. I can't believe my eyes. There's a... oh no, two people up there. What I wouldn't give for a pair of binoculars right now. I can't see what they look like at all. I can't even bloody tell if it's two men, two women, or one of each sex. I can't see what they're wearing. Are they indigenous people? Do they live here? Or are they modern people who've come from Ostium? If it's the latter, then it could even be Jake and Monica. Who else could it be from Ostium? Bloody hell. If it's the latter, then it could even be Jake and Monica. Who else could it be from Ostium? Bloody hell. And then they're gone. Disappeared from my view. Got inside a cave. Great. So I wait. And get sweatier and more tired and more impatient. I want to be somewhere else. Somewhere colder. I'd be happy to be back in England on a particularly shitty rainy day. But no such luck. What's that wonderful American expression I've heard Bruce Willis or Samuel L. Jackson or one of those Hollywood tough guys say more than once? Wish in one hand, shit in the other, and see which one fills up first. I wait what feels like an inordinate amount of time, and they never come out. Well, bollocks. So what do I do now? I could go all the way up there and hope I guess the right cave but that would be a bloody lot of climbing. 
It would only take one slip, one fall, and that would be the end of me. And no one would know. And no one would give a shit. So, plan B. I could... Go through that open door between those two boulders over there. What the bloody hell? Fucking unbelievable, that is. Did it just appear out of nowhere? Was it always there and I just didn't see it with my own two eyes? I know I haven't conducted a thorough search of the area yet, and I've had my focus pretty much on the caves over there. Still, I find it really hard to believe, even though it's staring me right in the face. Well, no time like the present. I toddle over to it and see the doors wide open. I can see through it, and on the other side is... a street in Ostium. I know I haven't enjoyed the hospitable pleasures of Ostium for that long, but I can still see those facades and know what the bloody hell I'm looking at. I suppose the number one question is, which Ostium is it? Well, I'm about to find out. I step across the threshold, and things turn briefly dark. And then I'm back in Ostium again. And let me tell you, it feels bloody great to be home. Sort of. So, first stop has to be the clock tower. HQ, right? This looks like any old Ostium, and the only way I'm going to be able to tell which one it is, is by what's happening behind door number one. Oh, but no. Hold on a second, Bob. Would you look at this? Now that's something you don't see every day. Everything's all lit up here like it's all kosher, nothing out of the ordinary. For Ostium, that is. But as I cast my eye skyward, I see a black firmament with occasional twinklings. It's all dark up there with no sun or anything that would apparently give light. And yet I can see clear as day to the clock tower. Well then, what does that mean exactly? As soon as I set foot in HQ... I know it's not the one I left, what feels like a short while ago. It's all different, and once I walk around a bit, I see things. A sleeping bag, an iPad, articles of clothing. I go into the bedroom and see lots of the same stuff. Gordon Bennett, I found it! Somehow I really did it. I'm in the same ostium as Jake and Monica. Fantastic! And where are they? Probably having fun on the other side of one of the doors, and all I need to do is sit me ass down and wait. Maybe I'll make myself one of those lovely cuppers Monica's always talking about. My phone starts making all sorts of noises. I must be connected to that infamous Ostium Wi-Fi. I check my phone and, wonder of wonders, find a new Ostium recording from Jake. Blimey! Now I'll find out what they've been up to in my absence. I check my email before I start listening to the recording and don't see anything new. But there is something odd. In my sent email folder, there's one that hasn't been sent. What's all that about, then? I look and see... Oh, shit! It's from Jake. Somehow I've got an email from him in my sent email folder of all places. And we'll end this recording with me extolling the virtues of Jake Fisher's wise words. Hey Dave, I hope you're receiving this. I don't know because our internet isn't working properly. I think that might have something to do with what's happened. It also possibly explains why you found a different ostium to mine. We've become untethered. I assume you're still keeping up with the recordings, and from my end they're uploading like usual, so you should be getting them. In which case, you know what I mean about untethered. But I don't get how the internet is sort of working doesn't really make sense. But whatever does it, Ostium, am I right? For now, we're going to keep going with the usual plan. Going through more doors and seeing what we can find. Monica hopes we might find Steve, hopefully alive, on the other side of one of these doors. I don't know. After finding that other guy, dead due to very mysterious and unresolved circumstances, let's just say I don't have high hopes. But other than keeping on keeping on, I don't know what I personally expect to find with these doors in Ostium. I know I'm connected, but I don't know how or why. So we'll just go about it and see what happens. I've not been sleeping well. 
having some really bad nightmares, apparently. I don't know. When I wake up, or more accurately, get woken up by Monica, I'm sweaty, my heart's pounding, my throat is raw and sore from yelling and apparently screaming. But I don't remember anything about what I was dreaming about. It was probably bad, but I can't recall a single detail, which is pretty disturbing. I at least like to have something to go on, so I can try to help myself through this, you know. Part of me is also wondering and really concerned. I mean, really concerned. I haven't told Monica about it, and I probably should. I don't know. There's just something inside me saying don't do it. It's weird. But anyway, what I was trying to say was I am concerned with all the terrible stuff happening around the world, that it might be related to Ostium, to going through those doors, that us doing that and bringing back artifacts and putting them in the map table is somehow causing those catastrophic events. I know, it sounds crazy writing it down and reading it, but what if? If all these lives being lost and destroyed was because of me? Man, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. I'd just walk through that gate and drop off the edge, not caring what would happen to me, because it would be all my fault. And what if our continuing to go through the doors is causing more devastation? What if Mount Etna is now erupting, or the bubonic plague is making a big comeback with a new and incurable strain? It's got me very worried, and I have no way of knowing. I think I really need to talk to Monica about this, get her POV on it, and see what she thinks. Now, as for you, I'm honestly not sure what you're going to do, or what you can do for that matter. I guess you could start going through all the doors in order, just like we did, bringing back artifacts, but that seems like it's just going to start you on your own trajectory, and if your goal is to somehow find us, I hope that's your goal, that's what I'd like you to try to do, that doesn't seem the right way to go about it. As for an alternate idea, I'll be honest, I've got nothing. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news followed by more bad news, but I wanted to keep you informed and up to date however I can from my end. And hey! I'm hoping you're going to come up with a great idea and start doing it, and before I know, you'll be walking through that front gate, or opening one of the doors here and surprising us, or maybe revealing yourself when we go through one of the doors. So, fingers crossed, man. Talk soon. Jake. Emu installment number 9 Once I finished up listening to that Austin recording, I found two more had mysteriously downloaded onto my phone. Jake had talked about having problems with the internet, but things seemed to be working pretty well so far. After that, I tried sending a message to Jake, and that's when I hit a brick wall. Nothing's going out, only stuff coming in. Exactly what looks like it's happening with Jake. Also, it's really handy getting these new recordings, which explains why things are both odd and shitty here, and why there isn't any sun anymore. I don't really know what to do next. I suppose I have to wait for Jake and Monica to get back, but I have no bloody idea when that will be. So I'll make myself some nosh and walk around HQ for a little while. I don't feel like I'm trespassing on anyone's space here. It's Ostium. Not Jake's, not Monica's, and not mine. So I end up in the bedroom, because there aren't that many rooms to begin with here. I check under the bed to make sure there isn't a secret hidden door under there again. No such luck. I step into the bathroom and take a quick pee. As a matter of courtesy and cleanliness, I sit down. It allows me to keep looking around the confines of the loo. I'm not expecting anything special, but... Jake always manages to find out something or discover something new about Ostium this way. And that's when I don't precisely see something, but I feel something's off kilter in some way. It's almost like a feeling of... Hmm, what would I call it? Recognition, I suppose? Deja vu, possibly? I finish up using the bog, flush, and wash my hands, and that's when the strange feeling gets stronger. I look around the sink and crouch down to my knees, 
feeling it getting even stronger now. Why does this feel so familiar? I haven't really been here before. In my mind, maybe. And just for a few ticks in that other ostium. But what is it? I find myself reaching out to touch a spot on the tile behind the sink and low down. I don't know why. It just feels the correct thing to do in this situation. And it has to be this exact tile. I touched in the center, feel something building, and in the next moment I'm slamming against the opposite wall of the bathroom. What the fuck was that? It feels like every one of my vertebra got shaken about. My brain feels like it got just a little bit boiled. Can't be good for it. I go back to that special tile. Yes, like a dog that's just been told off not to try to eat the Christmas turkey, I'm right back at it again. This canine won't go down without a fight. This time, I somehow know what to do. Before I didn't, now I do. Did that electric shock do something good, perchance? I draw the shape of an O on the tile. The whole thing immediately starts lighting up. The O I just traced, a black line standing out. Then the light fades and the tile pops out of the wall. I catch it in my hand. It actually feels warm to the touch, like a heated floor tile. I put it down carefully, and my hand shoots into the open hole before I can stop it, and draws out a gun. Only, it's unlike any gun I've ever seen before. About the size of your usual cop show standard firearm, maybe a little smaller, but it's got extra bits on the side. Looks like minute tubing for goodness knows what. The whole thing is all flashy, shiny metal. Definitely gives off a futuristic vibe. The handle of the weapon is rounded, more cylindrical. It feels weighted at that end too. I shake it a little and hear a sloshing sound. Okay, that's bloody strange. There's some sort of liquid in the handle. Whatever firepower this gun possesses, the fuel or ammo must be in the handle. Alright then. My other hand puts the wall tile back in place without me actually thinking about it, and with a brief flash the tile becomes a solid part of the wall again and looks natural. I walk into the other room and hear someone rattling the door handle. They're trying to get in. Who the fuck can that be? I remember that Austin recording about those soldiers coming to town. I go up to the window hoping they can't see me like they couldn't see Jake or Monica before. It's a man, dressed in his camouflage uniform. It looks like one of them. But didn't Monica send them all on a non-return ticket through one of the ostium doors? Maybe this one somehow managed to get out, to find his way back to ostium. He can't get into the clock tower, that's for sure. So that makes me safe. I watch and wait. And before long, he gives up and starts walking away. He seems to be the only one out there. I wait for him to walk out of sight, and then I quietly slip out the door. I want to know where he's going, what he's going to try to do. He doesn't have a lot of options here, and I don't know what he's seen so far on the other side of one of the ostium doors, but Monarch and Jake could come back through any second, and of course, this bloke's carrying his own piece. Before I know it, It could be all guns blazing. I've got to follow him. I'm following, keeping enough of a distance to not be seen. There's not much noise in Ostium, so it's pretty easy to hear which way he's walking. Ooh, my head's not feeling so good. Oh, my sight is getting all blurry. I'm starting to fade. Everything's getting hazy. I'm gonna fucking faint. Bit better now. Alright. Don't know what the fuck that was. Let's keep following that gent. Right. Oh shit. Hey. Who the fuck are you? Where, where did you come from? Were you following me? What's that in your hand? Oh shit, no, no. Please don't do that. Oh. 
Well, shit. That definitely wasn't the fucking plan. What am I supposed to bloody do now? Okay, okay. Deep breaths. Let's think, Dave. Sort it out. You know you can... Well, there's really only one option, isn't there? I have to take the bloody corpse through a door. Rightio, then. Where the bloody hell am I? Is this a cinema? I smell popcorn. Holy shit, it is! Over there is right where you get your popcorn and your sweets. Unbelievable! But getting back to the business at hand, namely this dead bloke, where well, is one stash of corpse at a cinema? <laughs> but of course. It's the front row for you, my son. Let's get you all comfortable. You've got the bloody best seat in the house, mate. Keep your chin up. Come on. Oh well, suit yourself. I'm sure you'll wake up when you get to the good parts of the film. Enjoy the creature feature. Emu installment number 10. I'm looking at it and still find it fucking hard to believe. It's a gun. But unlike any gun I've ever seen on planet Earth, it's all Star Trekky and futuristic. But my hands know how to operate it, somehow. What buttons to push, what bits to twist and pull to make it work. How the hell is that possible? I just woke up a few minutes ago, regained consciousness. I found myself on the ground outside of this big building. It took me a bit to recognize it as the casino building from the Ostium recording. On the island of Catalina, I think it was, that Jake and Monica went to. It's good I woke up when I did, because as soon as I lifted my head up off the ground, I heard that blackness Jake is always talking about. He's right. It's fucking terrifying. And coming in fast, so I legged it towards the quay and those little boats. Now I'm trying to remember which one it was that Jake used to find that secret door. I don't have time, so I jump on board the nearest one and charge to the cockpit. I don't know if it's the same boat, but there's a hatch door with the Ostium hexagonal lock, mercifully unlocked. I fall through as the world around me ends. And now I'm somewhere completely different. Not back in Ostium as I expected. Okay then, I'll manage. Looks like I'm on an island. There's deep blue ocean, a nice looking beach to get a suntan, and green grassy hills, and... <laughs> Bloody hell! It's a Moai! I must be, somehow, unbelievably, on Easter Island, of all places. And right then, I see a bloke coming over the hill. Where the hell did he come from? I crouch down behind some bushes. He's dressed in army gear. He must be one of those soldiers Monica sent through the Ostium door. I thought they'd all been killed, like that body they found at the cinema. Just found him there, no clue how he died. <sighs> Shit, he's coming down the hill, headed in my direction. What am I going to do? My talented hand knows what to do, how to use it. But I don't want to shoot the man. I definitely don't want to kill him. What's he really done wrong, after all? Just followed orders. Oh shit. My sight's starting to go again. I can't see well. Everything's blurry and fading to black. Oh. Oh, you. Yes, you, you silly wanker. What the fuck are you doing out here on your lonesome? Where's your commander to tell you where to go and what to do? Uh-uh, now, now. Keep your hands away from your gun, please. Yes, you've noticed mine, have you? Nice little piece, isn't it? Yes, keep those hands up, like a good little boy. No one will get hurt. Stand right there. Perfect. Oh, 
All right then, another one down. However many others to go. Let's get a move on then. God, I must have blacked out again. Something's definitely not right with me. I feel empty inside. Who knows what's going on with my internal organs. I don't feel very well, to put it politely British. But there's no chemist in the neighbourhood, so no medicine to make my tummy feel better. I must have gone through another ostium door, hoping to get back to the town. No such luck. And now I'm somewhere... metal. No, not the music. It looks like some sort of ship. You know, the kind that flies through space and across light years. I know. <laughs> Bloody cool, isn't it? Of course, usually when I'm in this sort of virtual world, it's usually under the purview of a video game. And with the press of a button, a handy map will materialise, showing me where I can go. In this situation, no such luck. It's all just metal walls and floors and ceilings, with metal doors. Although that one at the end of the corridor I'm in looks a little different. Almost like it might be a lift. Only one way to find out. As I reach it, the door is open with a great future automatic door opening sound, and I step inside. Now where shall we go? I just say the first things that come into my head. Um, ship's computer, please take me to the bridge. And then the lift starts moving, and I can hardly believe it. It goes in various directions, like a great wonkovator. I can feel it changing direction, though I'm never thrown to the floor or knocked over in any way. Incredible. I suppose Star Trek did get something right. Cheers, Jean. The doors open with that great sound again, and I'm on the bridge of the spacecraft. I could tell right away with a view of space right in front of me, and all the different kinds of stations that handle all the different functions of the ship, engineering, navigation, etc. And at one of those stations is someone... And he's heard me. Hey, who are you? What are you doing here? Please don't shoot. I don't know. And right at that moment, everything starts to tilt to the left and the right, and I'm blacking out. Fucking brilliant. You okay? How'd you get here? Careful, you're gonna... What the fuck? Eat laser. Well, that was bloody easy. Now let's get you back to your little station, mate. Don't want to have you not following the captain's orders now, do we? There we go. The screen or console or whatever the hell it is will hold you up nicely. Looks quite artistic if I do say so myself. Hopefully Jake and Monica will be impressed. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Okay now, let's move along and see what the next ostium door has hiding behind itself. Emu installment number 11. Our next stop, Mind the Gap, puts me somewhere bloody cold. For a moment I wonder if I've been miraculously brought back to my homeland, but there's a little too much snow on the ground. I suppose I could be up on a hill or a mountain. Ben Nevis? I don't think so though, it just doesn't look right. Also there are these bizarre looking huts on stilts. Like those ones they have on Tahiti, except we've got the literal polar opposite weather here. It's sure not bloody England. I have no idea where I am. But then again, other than recognising those unique Moai, saw one physically at the British Museum, 
And thank you, British colonialism, for stealing just about everything within that hallowed massive building of history and culture. Now what exactly am I going to do here? The cold has gone through my pitifully few layers of clothing, and is making its way through my layers of dermis. I'm not going to be able to stand it too long out here. I'll free my... I'm not going to be able to stand it too long out here before I freeze my bloody balls off. And I really don't want that to become literally true. I just, I'm just not sure. Oh god. The sight's going again. I think this, is, this has happened before. And I'm blacking out again. Where's that fucker? I can feel him. I can bloody smell him. I know there's one of them here somewhere. Where is the bugger? Come out, come out, wherever you are. I've got a little present for you. Don't worry, it won't hurt a bit. I know, Gran. What big ears I have. <laughs> what a big nose I have. I know what big teeth I've got. I... And that... That's such a big gun I've got. All the better to end your fucking life with. Ah, oh, there you are. Let's try sneaking up on you. Catching you in the axe, so to speak. See if we can get a look of sheer terror on your face before your life goes kaput. Oh, you're shivering. Been stuck here for a while, have we? Freezing our little arse off, are we? Well, don't worry. Soon it'll all be over. No more cold, no more hurting. Mummy will kiss it better. The bloody lightning bolt. Oi! Yeah, are you alright? Did you need some help? Here, I've got this. And another one bites the dust. John Deacon, start playing that bass line. Meanwhile, I'm going to throw this bloke over my shoulder. He's a bit smaller than the others, a bit lighter, which helps with the hoisting and lifting. Come on, into the hut with you. Hope the ladder can take both our weights. There we go, inside. Let's get you all sorted and comfy then. There you go. I'd give you some of these first to keep you warm, but you don't exactly need them now, do you, mate? I'll take one for myself, though. Don't mind if I do. It'll give me a bit of warmth. And on to the next door. I'm back on another spaceship. Or something like it. Metal all around me. I actually wish I had some metal music to play, just to make things feel a little different. I can see it's different than the last place, so I'm not on the same ship. It's another one. Or a space station. Could it be bloody DS... Could be bloody DS9 for all I know. And I can't exactly go back to the door I just came through. By the time my mind was clear, I was in full control of my senses and faculties. By the time my mind was clear, and I was in full control of my senses and faculties, there was no door behind me. Well, that's not exactly correct. There were lots of doors all around me. Did one of them lead back to where I was before? <laughs> Fuck knows. I can hardly remember where I was before. These dizzy spells and blacking out... They're absolutely awful. Everything's just starting to blur. What I can remember, that is. What I can remember, that is. I actually don't know how much more of this I can take. Talk about wear and tear. The center isn't really holding anymore. I'm slowly but surely falling apart. The one thing I keep telling myself, my new mantra, post-emu, is that there's got to be a reason for all this. A reason for me being tested, brought to the brink of my physical, mental, emotional ability. My wit's end. It's got to be all headed somewhere. I just can't see where. Yet, I might never even be able to. But once I reach that finish line, snap that winning tape, I'll know it all then. Just like Jake will, when he gets to his own end. His own finish line and the checkered flag starts waving. Right? There has to be a reason. And even if there somehow isn't, I can't live with that. I can't tell myself that and keep putting one foot in front of t'other. It just won't work. So we're sticking with that mantra for now. 
There's got to be a reason for all this. The doors all look the same, and I have no bloody idea where I'm going to go. The doors all look the same, and I have absolutely no bloody idea why I'm going or supposed to go. Therefore, I'm just going to pick doors completely at random. Let's be that outlier, that anomaly, and go wherever I feel like going. Not looking for a lift here, just going through door after door after door, till I drop out an airlock port. <laughs> just going through door after door after door, until I drop out an airlock or permanently lose my mind. <laughs> And then I stopped suddenly. Did I just hear something? A door opening? One that I didn't open myself? As in someone else did? Is someone possibly following me? Oh shit. It could be one of those military guides. I need to leg it. Don't want to get caught by one of them. Packing firepower and all. I know I've got that weird little gun and sort of know how to use it, but I don't want to hurt or kill anyone. I just want to get my ass out of here. So I move faster, like a leaping gazelle being chased by a cheetah. Well, sort of. A few doors later, I'm not hearing anything bringing up the rear. The coast looks clear and I think I'm safe for the time being, which is why I immediately start heading back the way I came from. I know, I'm a complete idiot, a right old pillock, but I want to make sure it was one of them soldiers, not someone else. There's always the chance it could be Jake or Monica, right? I need to be sure. And if it is one of them, and they see me, I can do my disappearing act, and they'll never be able to find me. Which door or series of doors did I go through? I'm backtracking one door at a time, walking slowly, waiting before each door, just far enough away so it doesn't open automatically, to make sure I don't hear anyone in the next room or corridor. That's when an alarm starts going off, and the floor leans to the left. I slide into the wall, but stop myself from breaking anything. What the hell is going on? Something's very wrong here. And then I can hear that blackness, and it all makes sense. And I'm very quickly running out of time. I start running, going through the doors, and not caring if I find anything or anyone on the other side. I come into a big room with lots of tables and pedestals and displays with things on them. Where the hell am I? At the far end of the room, I can see them! Monica and Jake! Monica's going through the doorway. She's carrying something. No, oh, somebody. And Jake's... staying? The bloody hell! It's the last thing I see before the blackness takes over me. Sayonara. These episodes were written, produced, and voiced by Alex C. Talander. Guest voice actors in these episodes were Kurt Smith in Emu Installment Number 9 and Paul Bay in Emu Installment Number 10. If you like Ostium, please consider supporting our show on Patreon for as little as $2 a month. We will get access to many episodes, including the Ostium files. As a supporter, you'll get your very own special door, and eventually your very own Ostium file. If you would like to just make a one-time donation, you can also do that through our website, ostiumpodcast.com. And if you haven't already, please give us a rating and review on iTunes, as this makes Ostium more visible to new listeners. And the more listeners and support we get, the longer Ostium will run. Ostium Season 3 will return with Episode 21 on September 2nd. Thank you.